Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in again. Um, for any who watched my first video, it was indeed that, just a test video to see how this would turn out. Um, I suppose you might say this is my first video in earnest, um, painting a model from start to finish. In this first video I'm going to look at... Um, Probably just applying the base colours to this Stormcast Eternal Retributor, uh, Liberator, sorry, not Retributor, different different squad type. Um, depending on how fast the initial, the base colours dry, I may put the ink washes on after it as well. Um, but, we'll see. Um, this is literally only my second vivid, second ever video attempt for a YouTube video. I am by no means um, a master painter, far from it in fact, but I've watched enough videos over time to enjoy watching others paint. I know it helps some people relax when it helps me relax, so I figured why not do the same, do some painting as I like to do in my own free time, film it, and if anybody likes to watch it, great. If they don't, also great. Um, so for what it's worth, let's get this Liberator started. Uh, I do, uh, the army, my, my army is a Hammers of Sigmar army, so I will be painting it in the traditional Games Workshop quote-unquote colour scheme, the gold and the, the dark blue. Um, again, I am not a master painter. Um, this is not a how-to video. This is just me giving it a go, and I hope you all enjoy. So let's get it started. I've uh, taken the liberty of already loading my palette up with uh, Retributor Gold. Let's bring that into shot. Base Retributor Armor, sorry. Um, <clears throat> there are other colours and other paint schemes out there available, of course. Other, um, other companies I just... I use uh, Games Workshop products because I always have. I have used other paint schemes as well. Um, <clears throat> other brands, sorry. They're fine. No problem with them. Uh, but as I'm a, a lifelong workshop fanboy, if you want to call it that, most of my paints are indeed Citadel colours. Again, this is not a how-to video. This is not a recommendation. It's just... Me painting away. I hope you enjoy it. Um, what I will say about the recording setup I have. <coughs> Excuse me throughout this video. I may cough throughout. I'm only just recovering from a cold. I will try and soften the coughs if I have to. Or if they get quite bad, in, I'll, I'll fix them in post-production. But my, my setup for this shot this film this video is literally just my mobile phone on a mini tripod in front of me whilst i paint i may look at a better setup down the line it honestly depends you know on if i first of all how successful these videos are if, if people if there's enough demand out there for them, maybe I'll look into getting some more equipment. <laughs> also depends on my own inherent skill, to be honest, or lack thereof, in this case, as it may be. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep the model in shot <laughs> whilst painting at the same time it is interesting. I won't lie. I'm being forced to bend my wrist. <laughs> the one which, the one which with I'm using the brush in unconventional ways. Well, relative to how I normally paint, I'm certainly normally a lot more hunched over the model. So perhaps this video is in one way a good thing because it'll help my upper spine if nothing else. Um, but I'm certainly used to more. Um, <clears throat> more comfortable for me positions when I'm painting, if you will. Um, but 
forgive me if I do go out of shot or if the shot's not perfect. Again, if this becomes a thing that I do, if it becomes more of a... I don't like to use the term success, but if there's enough demand, if people want to see it enough, I will look into better equipment, perhaps a better rig so I can get better shots, like a, you know, like a shot where it's straight down and maybe a side-on shot perhaps, I don't know. Um, I've seen a lot of videos on how they do it and I am very aware. <laughs> Setup is much better than my own at the moment, but again, rank amateur <laughs> coming at you. Um, so apologies in advance if the the rig of or the rig <laughs> rig is a very strong word for what I've got set up. <clears throat> if my setup is not great. I suppose I'd better talk about what I'm actually painting and my approach, I guess. Um, I don't know the formal terminology. I've heard of things like slapdash and I know what a sub-assembly is, for example. I, you could argue this model is a sub-assembly of sorts. Of course, here is the model's shield. I do like to paint shields separately before I stick them on, or at least I like to paint the insides of the shield separately. I know it's an odd thing, especially with a rank and file trooper, but if I just put the model down for a second, bring the shield more into focus. It's it's the little things like the the would you call it trim or embezzlement? Be, not embezzlement. Um, bezel? I don't know. The raised bit there and the handles. It's a little thing, but if you do take the time to make sure it's done neatly. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, not by a, a long shot. Um, it does look better. It does look better. In fact, I've actually got one of my other models, which is at the stage ahead of this one. I'll bring it into shot briefly. Let me just rinse my brush off so I don't ruin my brush. Just take you out of the frame for a second. <clears throat> so in traditional certain children's television style, here's one I prepared earlier. I'm not naming any names. Again, this is still sub-assembled. You can see I can remove the shield still and again here is the idea I was, I was aiming for in that 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 bevel I think it's bevel I don't know the gold bit there in the middle it, it's a simple thing because you know you could argue well if it's out of shot and certainly if I put the shield back on and you know even from this distance away you know if you're looking at the model you can't really tell but you know I'm a painter before I am a player, first and foremost. I do enjoy painting. And for anybody who's interested in looking at, especially miniature-based models, I find that the interest comes from the attention to the detail. So that's why all those, not all of my models will be sub-assembled. Um, <clears throat> some might not require it, for example. Um, anything with a shield almost certainly will be sub-assembled. Um, and I, I use the phrase very sparingly. Character models, leader models, yeah, I'll probably more sub-assembly them um, in the more uh, in the better understanding of it. So, like the legs might be separate from the torso initially, and so on and so forth. Um, but this liberator and the rest of its squad, the rank and file troops. You know, the argument is you, you probably don't want to take too much time with them. It's not that's not an excuse for not being neat. Not by any stretch of the imagination, I do I do believe you should try and be neat to a point. You know, you, you, so I'm going to deliberately make a mistake here. I'm slightly out of focus there. Sorry, folks. If I accidentally slipped and painted the terouge the gold as I have just done in the shot, that's not the end of the world. I know I'm going to be going over it with Cantor Blue, which is a very dark colour. It's got a stronger pigmentation than the gold. It's not an issue. However, were it the other way around, where if I decided to paint the blue first and then the gold, all the, the, the gold, um, especially this range of gold, is, is quite heavily pigmented and it's, it's very good, actually. It, it'd take a, a layer or two more to go over the blue or I'd have to, you know, wash the blue off and... It's rank and file, so I try try and keep it neat and clean to avoid having to take the time to do that. 
And also just t taking those few minutes before the actual painting happens to work out my approach to say, right, what, what colors do I want going on first? That I don't mind coloring, <laughs> quote unquote, outside the lines. Um, so, I mean, you'll see that I've, I've already done the black, for example. Black is a very forgiving color to paint over because it's very dark, it's very heavily pigmented. So you could argue, well, I'll just put it on last. But as you can see there, if it, like the in between the armor greaves, like in these, between the pectoral and the upper arm, there's a bit of black there for the undersuit. Similarly, between the upper arm and the lower arm, I thought it's easier just to get the black in before I get the gold on top. Yes, it requires me to be a little bit neater when I'm applying the gold paint to those to the upper arm and the lower arm plates, but because the upper and lower arm plates are raised, it, I, I figured the model will do the work for me. Um, it's certainly a concept I went into in my test video, um, and especially the case with orcs, because there's so many raised parts to an orc, ridges, muscles, pronounced jaw, etc., etc., and because they're such a, a slapdash race in their own right, you don't mind so much if they, you make a mess with an orc, um, because, you know, they're rough and ready. And also, ink stages, the stages that follows the base colours, then your, your layer stages. With each progressive stage, you're going to get neater, because you want to. You, you're taking that little bit of extra care. Again, it's a rank and file troop. I'm not going to... I'm not going to lose my mind over the details. So, for example, if this was a character model, and at some point I will paint a character model, the shoulder pads would be applied after I'd painted the arms of the shoulders, uh, and I'd paint the underside of the shoulder pads as well. Now, there's an argument to me, well, why bother? Because once the glue's on, you're not going to be able to see underneath them, and you're not. You're arguably not. But there's always going to be myself, and at least one other person in the world, who look a really detailed look, look at the model. You know, really, if I bring it as close as I can without it going out of focus, they'll want to have a look in the under. I'll go, ooh, you've missed a bit, or ooh, you've, you know, you've caught that. And it's a small thing. It, arguably, it's a vanity thing more than anything else. But, you know, I mean, if you're going to get into miniature painting, <laughs> it's because you enjoy painting in miniature detail, as I do. So there's an argument to be made for and against going to that level of attention to detail. Um, I could be wrong, I could be off base. There's probably an easier and quicker way to do it. Um, again, I am no, by no stretch of the imagination, a master of this art. Um, I think I, I think I'd describe myself as good at it. Um, I would be very generous in describing myself as occasionally very good, borderline great. Well, not great, so it's a very strong descriptor, but very good. Let's let's settle with very good. But again, that's 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 the case with say character models. Um, I recently painted the lion, for example, um, for the Dark Angels in Warhammer Forty K, who is the my avatar that I use for this channel. Uh, he he's the he's the primark of the Dark Angels, not just my leader, but he's. He's the originator. So naturally, I took a lot of time with him. He was sub-assembled to the nth degree. Um, I mean, of course he was. He was <laughs> he's a one-of-a-kind miniature. Well, two if you consider the 30k series, the Horus Heresy series. And at some point, I will actually paint that model. I have got it, but I haven't. I think I've started it. I think I started painting the Night Lords on his scenic base, but that's as far as I got. Because the actual lion came out, the 40k lion. I thought, well, that's taking precedent. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm kind of going off the beaten trail a bit. Oh, that was shot again there. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely took my time and sub-assembled the lion because he's a character model. Every little detail under the shoulder pads, the underside of the shoulder pads, and so on and so forth. They were all absolutely painted. Again, you're probably not going to be able to tell unless you're... I actually showed it to my friend, and he did pick out the, like, there's some lights on the reverse of the lion shield, which I painted and then used an OSL, an object source lighting, to make sure that the light from those little lights bounced on the armour. You've got to be looking for those. You know, you've got to be a real fan of the hobby 
and the model series to know they're even there. Uh, he did, and is, and looked and went, oh yeah, I can see you've done that, I think you see you've caught it. Again, there's an argument to it, is that not a vanity? I mean, not only did you have to know where to look, but he had to bring a magnifying glass out to see it. It was worth it, because, you know, at least one person, including myself, knew it was there, knew what to look for. He appreciated it, I appreciated it, I appreciated him telling me that he appreciated it, it was very nice. Um, after all, any of us who do display our art, um, we do so for praise, I guess. You know, anybody who says, no, I don't do it for praise, do they not? I mean... Why sign your name to it? Or why put your, your name or your voice or whatever it is? How, however you acknowledge that that's your work. How, you know, by doing so you're saying, look at me, you look at, well, not look at me, but look at what I've done. Um, and it's not a, a cry for attention, I don't think. In some cases it might be, I don't know. I am by no means a psychiatrist. But any of us who are creative types, who want our artwork to be seen, There is a vanity and ego involved. Of course there is. Um, at least that's how I perceive it. I could be way off base. If I am, feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, indeed, if anybody watching this is a trained psychiatrist and can offer a, a professional <laughs> opinion on it, please do so. Uh, I'm a fairly open-minded individual. I think, At least I think I am. I hope I am. Um, and after all, this is just the ramblings of a part-time hobbyist who likes to make these videos, if for no other reason, for his own self-satisfaction. Um, I will, at some point, look back on these videos. I know it's an odd thing to admit to. Um, I have a lot of professional artist friends who, for various reasons, do not like to look back on their work. They, they consider it too much of a vanity or too much of a um, egotistical thing to do. That's fair enough. <laughs> they may be right. Um, I am something of an extrovert. I do not mind. Um, uh, at once upon a time, a long time ago, I was a professional actor. I went to drama school. I trained up as an, as an actor. I quite like watching myself back. Not in a not in a weird way, but in a to see how far I'd come each time I, you know, made a play or did a film or whatever it was I was doing. You know, you, you learn by making mistakes. You're only as good as your last job, and that's that's the, that's the truism for anybody who's in any form of employment, especially if you're self-employed. You know, at the end of the day, if people want to hire you or if people want to consider you for a commission or whatever. All you have is the body of work that you expose to the world and say, this is what I've done. Please hire me, etc, etc, etc. So I, and I understand like some of my artists' friends are uncomfortable showing the work because of anxiety or... You know, there, there is a... Especially if it's an original piece of art. Like, so, for example, although this is an original piece of art, I'm painting it, it's great... I'm not the designer of this model, Games Workshop are. Um, indeed, the colour scheme. Games Workshop picked the colour scheme of the Hammers of Sigma. I just happened to like it. Um, it's almost colour by numbers, this at this point. Arguably, it is colour by numbers. Um, and that's fine. I like it, you know. When I was a child, I enjoyed colour by number colouring books. It helped me relax. It helped me to chill out. Um, but then conversely to that, those people who create original art, my friends amongst them, anybody out there who is an original concept creator, a lot of your personality, a lot of, um, a lot of who you are goes into the choices you make in that artwork. And I, in a way I can kind of understand why some folks will be reluctant to show their work, especially if it's not finished. Um, you know, I'll ask my artist friends if I can see the sketches, and almost all of them will say, "Nope, <laughs> not a chance, Chris." Um, one blessing does. I'm not going to name names. He actually does ask me to. Uh, do you proof an artist's work? I don't know. 
but he does ask me to proof his work uh, because he you know he knows I'm also a I'm got very, very generous to describing myself as an artist compared to his work. <laughs> I'm a rank amateur. Um, but I have a, an eye for art. I got, my, I got my GCSE and my A level in art. So I have a reasonable understanding of what I'm saying when I'm talking about art and certainly when I'm discussing his work with him. But for the most part, my artist friends are not comfortable showing their sketch works, and that's perfectly reasonable. Wow, I blether on, don't I? Textbook extrovert. <laughs> anyway, that's the base coat gold done. Um, let's just do a quick or slow rotation whilst I discuss. As you can see, there are parts where I have gone over. There was the part here on the Terouge where I deliberately went over it just to explain my point, but then I'll bring the brush back in. But there's a part here on the shoulder pad where I did not deliberately go over the lines and that's fine because the the cantor blue the very dark blue that we use to uh, use as the baseline color for the blues is very heavily pigmented and it will in probably one coat if not one two light coats two thin coats to quote another online artist um it will cover it up and that's not the end of the world um but i'm happy with that there's, there's an argument to be made you could probably go with another thin coat of the same gold, especially in certain parts where it seems quite light, but I use, I think it's Reichland Flesh Shade as my ink wash for the gold, which is quite heavy. It's very warm um, and it's quite forgiving. Um, but anyway, when I come around to doing the next layer up, I go over it again in the, the same base color, the, the, the Retributor Armor, just to lift, you know, the like for example, here's the pectoral muscle I will paint the, the lifted bit again in Retributor Armour after I've put the shade in, just to give it that. That's how I approach the, the the two thin layers, the two thin coats approach, if you will. The Rather than put them on and then put the wash on, I prefer to put the base coat on, put the wash on, the ink, then do the second coat to lift the armour, give it that, um, that thick, that bolder pigmentation. Um, it just, it's how I approach it. It's not the definitive way, I'm not saying it's the right or the wrong way, but it's certainly how I do it. But there you go, there's the, the gold. Uh, so I'll, let's change over to the Cantor Blue in question. Oh, actually, you know what, I will go back to the gold briefly for one second, because of course I forgot the shield. So if you just bear with me for a second, folks, it shouldn't take too long, because there isn't too much gold on the shield, actually. It's mostly blue, as you saw with the one I prepared earlier. <coughs> And again, it's it's this is one of those where it's don't if you, if you decide you know you're using this video as a how to, <laughs> God bless you. Um, there are better videos out there for that, folks. I will be the first to freely admit. But if you decide, you know what, I'm going to use this chap's channel to show me how to paint a liberator, <laughs> which I'll never not find amusing. Um, you can afford to be a little. Not untidy, uh, not un is unneat a word, not. But don't be too precious with things like this beveling or whatever the word is to describe this raised bit. You're almost always going to go over because it's such a thin part of the base. Um, granted, I suppose if you had a really steady hand and a really thin brush, there are. Um, I, I, there probably are people right now who can do it without going over the lines. Um, they have a far steadier hand than I do. Um, but if you do, don't worry about it. Forgive yourself. It's fine. At the end of the day, uh, this is something that I hope you do for fun. Keep it fun. Uh, it is only a toy soldier at the end of the day. Um, and I, I promise you, you know, especially if you're fairly new to this hobby... The fine motor skills that you will develop will get better. As with any skill in life, the more you practice, the better you become. Um, I, I'm, I'm aware that the very first time I attempted to paint a toy soldier, and it was a long time ago, it was using the infamous or famous uh, RTB01 Space Marine box set, showing my age. Um, and 
<laughs> honestly, it looked looking back upon those models, I don't have them now unfortunately, I've thrown them away a long time ago but I certainly remember the the mess I made of them, it looked like I'd done a dip and drip, you know, very much dip the toy soldier, the model however you want to describe it, I don't get precious about it in a paint pot <laughs> left it upside to drip dry it was not my best work indeed my cousin and I young boys as we were found it hilarious at just how bad we both were at the hobby um, but that's fine. That's fine. We had a lot of fun doing it. Um, the summer in question that we did do it was, I believe, the summer between us going from primary school to high school. I believe if there are any of my esteemed American friends and colleagues watching this, that'll be the difference between elementary school and high school. So it was a nice summer. It was a nice summer where my cousin and I just <laughs> saved up our pocket money. Bought some toy soldiers, bought some paints, and I think at the time we were using the wrong kind of paints. Like, you know, the, I don't think Citadel paints even existed at that point. But the the paints we were using were very thick, very heavy. You didn't need to use turps to necessarily wash them out, but it certainly made things easier. <laughs> um, so to 10 and 11 year old boys who were attempting this for the very first time, yeah, had a riot. Probably got a little bit high as well. <laughs> but nevertheless, we had fun. Uh, so there you go. As you can see, I have made mistakes. I've coloured outside the lines. And that's fine. I know I'm going to be going over that with blue. Naturally, when I come to approach the shield, I'll do some more carefully with the blue so I don't go over the gold lines I've already painted. But this is a hobby. This is something we do for fun. You're going to make mistakes. I do, every day. Um, not just in my hobby either, in my work, my life. As long as you can learn to accept that you're going to make those mistakes. Forgive yourself. Brush it off. If you've offended or hurt someone by making a mistake, apologise to them. Assure them you didn't mean to make the mistake, you didn't mean to hurt them. There's not much more you can do. You know, don't beat yourself up about things that are not always within your control. Um... Easy to say, hard to do, I know. I'm the first to admit that if I make a mistake, I'm my own worst enemy. I really am. I look at what I've done, why I've done it, when I did it, how I did it. All of the all of the questions and the overthought comes into play. Practice what you preach and all that. Um, yeah. But when it comes to mini painting, folks, if you make mistakes, make a mistake. Learn from it. See if you can't improve on your next one. If you can, well, great. If you can't, eh, it's also cool. Right, so yeah. Uh, again, I'm rambling. Sorry, folks, I do that. This is, again, only my second ever attempt at making a video for YouTube. I hope, down the line, the rambling will <laughs> become more concise and salient to the the video I'm making. Who knows? Some folks might like my rambling, my stream of consciousness. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. You know, if you don't like it, I can always work on quote, unquote, a script. But this is fairly free. You know, I'm not going to be too precious about it. If you don't like it, and if there's nothing I can do to rein it in, maybe this isn't the channel for you. And that's fine too. Um, hmm. Now, for those keen-eyed viewers, will notice that this Cantor Blue I'm now applying, Cantor Blue, um, I'm using a wet palette, and I'll, I'll bring the camera over to that in a second. Um, I think I've applied a bit too much water into the mix to make it a little bit too thin. Which isn't great. It's not the end of the world, as I was just saying. Not le not one minute ago, it's fine to make mistakes. And it is. So in this case, it looks like I am actually going to have to do a second coat. However, I use... I think it's Drakenhof shade, the, the name of the shade. If it's not, when I come around to doing the shade, we'll see what the actual name of it is. I'll, I'll bring the paint to shot. Again, it's a very, very dense wash. 
very forgiving. And as with my approach to doing the gold, yes, this is quite light as blues go. Like you can see, it's um, it arguably is overwatered. Um, but when I come to apply the the layer coat, as GW call it, you know, base inks, shades, layering. Um, I'll be reapplying Cantor Blue, so it's not the end of the world. Again, arguably, it's not. It's, it might not be the best approach. I don't know. It's just how I do it. It works for me. This is not my first Stormcast Eternal. Far from it. Um, as you saw with the, I'll bring the other chat back into focus again. As you can see, the blue on. I'll just turn the blood around. The blue on his tabard is significantly deeper than the guy on the right. Um, and all I did was, same process. Initial coat, washes, second coat. Um, so it does work. I promise you it does work. You know, if you, had, if you do decide to follow my approach, <coughs> again, <laughs> might not be the best approach, but, you know, hey, if it works for you, great. Um, that's how I do it. That's, you know, and, and don't, don't lose, you know, don't lose faith in your own ability if when you're applying these paints, like, oh, God, there's not much pigmentation in there. I don't know. I mean, it's paint. You can, you can always put more in your palette. All right, so here's a nice example of being neat. Now, I'm going to go over the lines. I know I am because I'm, I'm an old man. Well, middle-aged, but, you know, I haven't got the dexterous uh, hands that I used to have. I'm almost certainly going to go over the edges, but I'll try not to. Again, it's not the end of the world if I don't. And it's certainly not the end of the world if you don't. If you make a mistake, it's paint. It can be corrected. Um, and don't always rush to, you know, if you if you do go over the lines, you're like, oh, no, no, no. A lot of people, myself included, will panic. And they'll, you know, race to put their, their brush in the water pot, rinse it off, get some water up. Because these are acrylic paints. They're water, bait, they're water soluble, so they... They can be rinsed off with water. And that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm not saying don't do that. You know, it's, you probably are likely to do that, especially on character models, because you don't want the the bleed over of colour, especially if it's a light to a dark part of the model. But, again, this is a hobby. It's something we do in our free time. It's something we do for fun. If you make a mistake, if it's a tiny little spillover. And I'll, you know, I'm going to do one deliberately. Just, there you go, on the haft of this hammer. Oh no, I've accidentally gone over it. If it's still wet, just put your finger on it. Rinse it off. Yes, alright, there's still now a little bit of blue staining on the gold. Alright, it's not great. However, it's not the end of the world. As I said earlier on, when I come around to reapplying the, the, the layer uh, level of paint, I'll be going over that bit again with Retributor Armor, which is a very densely pigmented metal metallic I'm reasonably confident that blue will be covered up and again this is a rank and file trooper uh, I'm painting these up you know as much for myself as anything else to keep me inspired to keep my, my army going um, my brother and I play regularly 1000 point armies I wanted to make up a 1000 point warrior chamber and I wanted it all fully painted on the table as and when it's fully painted and we play our first few games, I will, I may make a video around that. I might not, I don't know. If people are interested in that, put it into the comments. And if enough people say, yeah, we'd love to see the finished thing on the table. Cool. Um, I'm assuming my brother won't mind. He is a significantly better painter than me. Uh, I'm not going to name his name, but he has featured, or at least... A number of his models have been featured in Games Workshop in White Dwarf. Um, he's an extraordinary talent. Where if I would describe myself as good to very good, I would emphatically describe my brother as great to master. He wouldn't, but you know, we are British. One must maintain one's, you know, propriety and all that nonsense. But he is that good. Good lord, he's that good. Um, but I'm getting off topic. But yeah, um, there will be at least ten of these. So and obviously within that ten, there'll be two squads of five. In each squad, there will be a prime. 
a, a Liberator Prime, which is the sergeant, if you will, of the model, if you're unfamiliar with how the game works. Um, I have actually based up the, the Prime for this model, um, for this squad, sorry. I'll bring him into shot as well. He has been sub-assembled. Um, so here he is. He's the, I'll just take this boy out of the shot. I have applied the base colours, I've applied the inks, I've reapplied, I've not actually, no, I don't think I've applied the layers actually yet. But I have applied the bases and I've applied the washes. And if I just remove his arms, there you go, sub assembly. Not much of a sub assembly, granted, but I wanted to make sure I did a good job. He is the leader of the squad. Um, there will be two of these. I will aim to position them differently. In fact, I will be using the, uh, if I bring another model into shot, Beric the Stubborn, I think it is. I can't remember. He's a, he was a special edition model, and I'll be making him as the Liberator Prime for the other squad. These two chaps will receive a little more care than the set, the rank and the, the rest of the rank and file, perhaps. But again, not much more. There are, after all, going to be ten Liberators on the table. I think I think my thousand points contains twenty three models. These are going to be one of twenty three. I'm not going to lose sleep if they aren't perfect. Uh, the two characters I'm using, which are the Lord Relictor and the Lord Castellant. I mean, the Lord Castellant, it's still in its blister pack. It's not even assembled yet. It will be. I will. I may even do a video of building it. Um, if, if that's of interest to people, again, let me know in the comments. I'll make a video of building the Lord Castellant and priming it and what have you. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if people are interested in seeing... The finished army when it's eventually finished in a battle <laughs> almost invariably losing because not only is my brother a better painter than me he's a better player than me um that'd be nice it'd be nice um i think it'd be nice to see two fully painted armies um especially my brother's army he again paints to a much higher standard than i do but if that's not what anybody's interested in that's cool i might just do it anyway and if you're not interested in it i've done it just skip that video. Um, this channel will be used primarily for modelling and painting of miniatures. Um, I think. I don't know. Again, second ever only video on YouTube. This might not appeal to anybody. Who knows? I know the first video has now had something like 30 views, which is wildly beyond my expectations considering it was just a test video to see if I could actually get something in shot on how it would look. But, yeah, if you are one of those people who have viewed my first video, my test video, thank you very much. Yeah, genuinely, it makes, makes this <laughs> middle-aged artist, <laughs> amateur artist, feel uh, an enormous sense of gratitude and inspiration that anybody would want to watch my limited skill in painting and my incessant ramblings about all sorts of stuff so thank you it means a lot anyway back to the model as you can see i'm coloring in the lines <laughs> such a weird term to use on a 3d model but let's let's call a let's call a spade a spade that's what this is. It's colouring. It's colouring in. That's all it is. Um, granted, I like to think that my my skill in colouring in is somewhat better than five year old me. Um, but it is. It's still just colouring in within the lines. I am not the original content creator of this model. That should right is and should rightly be acknowledged as Games Workshop's creative team. The great. Uh, it sounds like I'm fanboying again, and I am. They do very good models. There's a reason I've stuck with the hobby for... God, how old am I? I'm nearly 45. I started when I was 12, so... 30-odd years. Maths is not my strong point. Um, and, you know, my, my cousin and I and my brother, I think our first foray into the hobby was a Hero Quest, which, of course, was a... Was it Milton Bradley? You know what? I'm not sure. It was a game made by another company, but licensed by Games Workshop. And that was our very first intro to tabletop gaming, to miniature gaming. 
and as you might imagine with impressionable <laughs> young boys who are 10, 11 and I think my brother would have been 8 at the time we took to it fondly you know the idea of heroes romping around a dungeon killing baddies, getting treasure of course we did what's not to like now I'm just going to change my tack slightly because I'm now painting the, the fascia of the shield this is where I do like to reattach it to the model not permanently just enough so I can you know use the model as my um, painting handle essentially um, because it's not glued it almost certainly will fall off a few times probably much to the amusement of my viewers I don't know I know I laugh at it every now and then but the reason I do that is for just just again for neatness sake you know it's not going to be perfect I will almost certainly go over a line or two and that's fine just try to be neat where well, you can. If you make mistakes, you make mistakes. It is not the end of the world. I mean, granted, if you're on like the final details and edge highlighting and you go over stuff, then it becomes a bit more. Uh. But again, water based acrylic paints. And you can always go over paint you've messed up with the colour you're trying to paint it in the first place. Lord knows I made more than enough mistakes with the lion when I was painting him. Um, to be honest, it's a shame I didn't start the video series I've started with him. Um, again, not because I'm a master of my art or anything like that, but because it's just such a beautiful model. Um, if people are interested in seeing what I did, again, put it in the comments. I'm more than happy to make a little quick video showing him off um, obviously there'll be no painting involved it's a finished model but yeah okay so that's the blue applied to the shield and to the model as you can see just bring my brush off just bear with a tick. as you can see in parts the blue is quite strong especially like here on this part of the shield where the pigmentation was just more dense and then as the the paint's watered down on my palette, it's become more watery, and that's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's it's done its job of staining the area blue, ready for the wash, which is a very pigment-heavy wash. So, yeah. And again, as with the previous model that I had up on screen earlier on, once I apply the second layer of Cantor Blue in the layering stage, it'll be much better, because there's that underlay. So there you go, so there's the gold and the blue. All that's left to do now is, um, <clears throat> there are a few points where I've gone over the gold onto the black there, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tidy that up. Maybe after the wash, actually. I may wait till after the wash, because black's very forgiving in going over stuff. But the next one, I've got two more colours, sorry, three more colours to do. Uh, I've got the pink, I think it's Screamer Pink it's called, to apply to the handle of his hammer, uh, and of his Gladius there, his Gladius, Gladius however it's pronounced, uh, the silver to apply to the hammerhead itself and to the, the chain mail on his tabard, and then there'll be specks of white in the lightning bolts on the shield, and up here on the lightning bolts, you can't probably, oh no, you can see on the shot, there's little lightning bolts coming from the hammer as well, uh, so I'll show uh, the other three colours left to go. Um, so I think I'll start with, you know what, I'll start with the, the white for the the, the lightning bolts and for the white as I'm sure GW do the same thing to be honest I'm not 100% sure um, but I'm sure that they start with Celestra Grey um, they might do they might not I don't know I do because I like it it's a nice solid very heavily pigmented colour it's a nice base for white uh, and it's got a hint of grey blue to it which is great considering it's it's a nice offset to the dark blue uh, that is the, the background of Cantor. So here, folks, because this lightning bolt is so thin, I am going to have to get in, get my head a little close to the microphone, so I'll try and lower my voice. I've also got to wear my painting glasses, jeweler's lenses, whatever you want to call them. Again, I'm nearly 45. My vision is not as strong as it used to be. 
So if there is a little sound distortion for this sequence, I apologise. Again, if this channel takes off, I will invest in better technology, for example, an actual microphone, proper cameras, a rig of some description, I don't know. But, who knows? Let's, let's see what happens with it, shall we? There we go. I have to say, kudos to Games Workshop's design team. Uh, these Liberators are now quite old. I think they're nearly 10 years old. If not, if they're not already 10 years old, they're certainly near there. Um, I'm aware that the, the new... There are, um, I forgot the name of the, the, the unit type. But the, the new Thunderstrike... Stormcasts are even nicer. At some point I will paint one or a squad of them on, on this channel. Um, but considering these models are, I think, 10 years old? Certainly nearly 10 years old. They're very nice. I mean, considering these were the first models to come from the studio after the, the collapse of the old world. My brother and I remember being just blown away at how detailed these models were relative to, say, their equivalent in the the old World Warhammer, like the Chaos Warriors or the you know the Knights of the Knightly Orders of the Empire, Bretonian Knights and so on. And yeah, the newer Thunderstrike models are much nicer. They, they are. They're, they're better detailed. They're just they're generally better models. But these Liberators, they still stand up. They're still high quality. And I just, yeah. Well done, GW. Again, I'd like to point out, folks, I am not in any way affiliated to Games Workshop. I'm not employed by them or anything like that. I just like to pay credit to where it's due. Um, good stuff. Well done. Anyway, uh, I'm, again, rambling off topic. So there you go. There's a Celestra Grey applied to the lightning bolts on the hammer on the shield. And if I turn it around, then just a slightly down again. And the lightning bolts on the hammer. Oh, you know what? There is one I'd forgotten. And that's the lightning bolt on his right knee, which is a nice little touch. And again, you, you can probably see, especially the keen-eyed amongst you, that I've slightly gone over the lines with the lightning bolt. It's not the end of the world, because mistakes happen. Once I've applied the wash, that will clear up a lot of sins. And when I come around to layering, it will be a case of the Retributor Gold will cover up what I've gone over. It's not the end of the world. I'll also be using a finer pointed brush. You know, the, the one I'm currently using, if I just bring my hand in so you can see, it's a, I think it's a small base. Yeah, small base. Um, it's, it's an old small base now, as you can see, I'm probably due a new one soon. Um, I, pr I know I don't clean my brushes anywhere near as well as I should, um, but it serves its purpose for this model. But when I come around to doing layers, I will, of course, go to a finer detailed brush. Anyway, on to Screamer Pink. And again, I know I said at the beginning of the video, there are other paint ranges available, colours available. I am not advocating for or against Citadel colours or any of their uh, competitors. You use what makes... You feel happy with your painting. Is this still in shot? There you go. Um, now, here's a point for anybody who is using Screamer Pink. It's a very, very heavily pigmented colour. Very heavily pigmented. Um, so, I know I've stressed throughout the video, try to be neat. And you should always, always try to be neat, no matter what colour you're using or what part of the model you're using. But with the models which are, oh, there goes the shield. Um, with those paints that you know are very heavily pigmented, try to pay a little bit of extra care to them because, trust me when I tell you, trying to go over screen of pink, even with a, a paint as, as deeply pigmented as, say, Retributor Armor, it's a pain in the butt. It really is. Because um, it's so strong. <laughs> It can be done. Indeed, I have done it in my top. Well, you know what? I've just done it there. It's not the end of the world. But do try to be neat where you can. Just, if only just to save yourself time down the line. You know? Um, 
Again, I'm not massively bothered because this is a rank and file trooper. I will, that, even though I say it's a rank and file trooper, I will clean it up. You know, I, I will I'll make it look as, as well as I can make it within what I think is uh, an appropriate level of care and attention. You know, I'm not going to pay the same level of attention to any of my rank and file troopers as I do say the Lord Castellan when I come to paint him. Because my Lord Castellan was my general. You know, it's, it's important that that one does look the best on the field. But it's... But I will still tidy up um, mistakes I've made. Because, well, I'm a miniature painter. I like to keep it clean. I like to keep it precise in detail. Anyway, again, once again, getting off topic. Here is, I'm not using, uh, for the silver, I'm using base lead belcher, lead belcher as my base for my metal. Um, I think GW use that for a lot of the uh, base coloured metals, certainly for bolt guns and, you know, um, I don't know. I'm sure they do, I'm sure they use other colours as well. I have other base metals. Um, but I just feel that this is a nice lead belt is a nice medium base. It's not too strong. It's not too silvery. It's clearly metallic. You can clearly it works. It does the job. Um, you all might want to use a different one. You know, use Stormhost Silver or whatever, or an, another paint range, whatever color they use. I like to use this because it just works for me. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. Again, you'll notice, especially with the Tarouge uh, studs, I have very definitely gone over the lines into the Tarouge. Um, it's not the end of the world. The The Drakenhof shade co uh, covers a lot of sins, especially with blue. Um, and when I come around to going over the silver anyway, because I think I use Stormhost silver, I think, I can't remember off the top of my head, you only need to apply the smallest amount to lift the metal. Um, by which I mean, you know, the, the, the smallest application of metal, uh, of Stormhost silver, on a, a bit where it's meant to be silver. It, let the paint do the job for you, you know. It's it's very bright, it's very eye-catching. Um, and the, the, the wash that I will give with Null Oil and with um, Drakenhof Nightshade will help cover up those bits where I've gone over the lines. It'll give the, the, the metal a, a stronger depth to it, if you will, give it a deeper, richer... What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure, but it'll, it'll just make the metal look much, much better, much more realistic. Um, so when I then do come around to highlighting the, the silvery metal bits, um, lead belcher with just a light coat of null oil, then lifted with, stay Stormhole Silver, that stormhole silver might be too bright to be honest. It's remarkable at how much of a a, a a a lift you get from what is the stormhole from the lead belcher to the the edge highlights, if you will. And you, you'll see that when I come around to doing that in the video itself, where I go to edge highlights and to layering. Hmm, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, I don't know if there's any silver on the shield I need to worry about. No, there isn't. No. All right, folks. Well, there is. We're coming up for nearly an hour. Um, I'll put the shield on just so we can have a quick look at what I've done so far. There you go. Yeah, so. At the top of the video, I declared myself as not the best painter in the world, and I stand by it. I'm certainly not the quickest painter in the world. But under an hour to get the base colours on a model, that's not too bad. Um, it's just occurred to me that um, the base I've done before I even start this model. In another video, I'll show you what color scheme I use to, you know, create that broken battlefield look. It's nothing special, nothing fancy, but it's always the first thing I do on any of my miniatures because it's just how I approach it. But I'll do that in a separate video. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So the gold's been applied, the blue, the silver, the pink, the white. Um, it's a base colours. It's rough and ready. It's not perfect. Um, the the next stage where I will apply the washes and the inks, much more forgiving. Um, the, the inks do a lot of the work for you. It's great. And you'll see that in the next video I create. Um, 
But there we go, folks. Um, stage one of this Stormcast. Hammers of Sigmar Liberator. Base coat supplied. Uh, the inks and the washing element of it. That in depth to the model, I'll do in a separate video, which will follow this one. If you have liked and subscribed to this video and this channel, thank you very much. If not, if you would, that'd be great. If you're not interested, that's also great. It's your life, your journey, you do what you want. Um, for anybody who's watched this video, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. And again, any comments that you'd like to add to the video, any of the ideas I've put forward throughout this video that you'd like me to like to see me do, or indeed, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me do, put them in the channel. I will happily consider them all. Um, and who knows, your idea might be the foundation of one of the future videos. I, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, folks. Ta-da.